Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from the epistle of St. James, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10 and 14 through 17. Let me read it for you. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppose you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You're doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but falls in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Now, according to tradition, the author of this epistle is James, the brother of Jesus. And James probably wrote this about 15 or 20 years after the time of Jesus. And he's writing to Jewish Christians outside of the area of Israel. And as you can see by the text, he's concerned with Christian behavior. Here he focuses on how people should treat one another within the assembly, within their church going. I and mean, if they show up and they seem to be wealthy and you show them honor and give them the best seat while dismissing somebody who appears to be poor, then you're not being Christ-like. You're not doing things the way God would have you do them. He does this with a number of different behaviors that, that fall short of what God would really want for us. That's really the focal point of the letter, is how to treat one another, how to show love and kindness and mercy to one another. It is by and large, a book of law, of law after grace. But what I want to focus on is what he says right at the end of our text, where he says, faith without works is dead. Because that's really kind of the, the central, I think, the central focus of the entire letter. He wants Christians to look at their behavior and analyze their faith. Is it real? Is it true faith? Is it a faith that's living or is it dead? Do they have a thriving faith in Jesus Christ which compels them to love God and to love others? Or do they have an empty, worthless religion? It's a question that we all need to ask ourselves. We call ourselves Christians. Do we 
have any evidence that we indeed are Christian. I'm going to use an analogy here. And like any analogy, if you press it too far, it'll fall, it'll fall apart. But I, I want to say this. I want you to hear me. When Jesus died for us, he didn't do it just so that we would become better people. He did it to bring us who were dead to life. He gave us new spiritual life through faith in him. As we look to the cross and believe in his love and his mercy for us, then that creates new life in us. Where we were once dead in our trespasses and sins, he makes us spiritually alive through faith in him. Now we still have our old sinful nature, but we also, when we believe and trust in him, have a new nature, one that loves God, one that loves others. And the love of God and the love of others is like the heartbeat of that new life in him. And just as a person who has a heartbeat is clearly alive, a person who doesn't have a heartbeat is dead. And so if you see the works of love for God and love for others as that heartbeat, you realize that if you're brought to new life and you have a heartbeat, then you also love God and love others. You don't have to try to do it. You just do it. You don't try to make your heart beat. It just does. Because you're alive, your heart beats. And God has brought us to new life through Jesus Christ, through faith in him. We are made alive in him. And as a result, our heart beats. And that means that we love him and love others. And yes, we will find ourselves falling back into that old nature living in that old nature from time to time. James talks about that elsewhere in his letter. He calls it stumbling. And sometimes we stumble, he says. We all stumble. We all fall back into that old nature. But just because you stumble doesn't mean that your heart stops beating. James is concerned that there are people who call themselves Christians whose heart does not beat for God, whose heart does not beat for others, that there is no love for others in their life. And they call themselves a Christian, but there's no evidence of it in their lives. And so he says, faith, just saying that you believe, without the evidence of life, that heartbeat, that love for God and love for others, that faith is dead. James will also say, listen, you say that you believe in God. Great for you. But the demons believe, and yet they shudder. See, it's not enough to just have intellectual assent and call that faith and then have no true life in you. But you're still just the old nature. Maybe one where you're trying to do your best, but that's not, that is not faith. Faith is new life created through the power of the Word of God as the message of the cross penetrates you. It creates faith in you so that you trust in him. You trust in his rule and reign over your life. You trust that his wisdom is greater than yours. And so it leads to obedience. It leads to a life where you imitate him because you want to. And yes, I have to say it, there's another part of us that doesn't want to. Well, James is bringing that to full attention here. 
so that we have to ask ourselves, is our faith real? Is there a part of me that loves God, that loves others? And I, and I don't follow it all the time, but I know that when I look to the cross of Jesus Christ, I want nothing else but to love him in return and to love others the way he has loved me. This is what James is encouraging us to do, to evaluate our lives, to see if we have a heartbeat, a heartbeat that's evidence of our new life in Christ Jesus, a heartbeat of faith, a heartbeat which is love for God and love for others that comes to us only through faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us upon the cross. Amen.